in studio for a little bit is Adrian Perkins, candidate for mayor of Shreveport. Before we get down to the nuts and bolts stuff, Aaron, I, I just I'm I'm I was going to say fascinated, but in awe is not an overstatement <laughs> of anybody who graduated from West Point, the United States Military Academy. And I said, not for the faint of heart, not for the undisciplined. Not at all. Holy cow, man. All. You still not make your bed, all. don't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Let's, it was a transformative tell, experience. In, in about 90 seconds, if you can, just tell me a little bit about that. What, oh, draw, yeah. what draws a high school kid at Captain Shreve oh, to yeah. say, okay, I got a choice here. I could go, I don't know, to LSU and have a good time and <laughs> s- study a little whatever, mm-hmm. or I could go t- somewhere where where literally you get up every morning at 4.30 and you are told what to do every <laughs> moment of every day for yeah. four years, oh, yeah. and you go to bed like at 11 or 11.30 at night, and it's one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult, education uh, oh yeah, one of the most difficult colleges in the world. Mm-hmm. Well, don't forget you have a bedtime at twenty two as well. When you're a senior at West Point, you still have a bedtime. You got to be in bed for taps at ten o'clock. So, add that to the burden. But no, honestly, um, the biggest driver was nine eleven happened when I was a junior in high school. Uh, I remember watching the towers fall from my biology two classroom, and I made a promise to myself that morning that I would stand in between the people who did that in my family. And as I was recruited by colleges, I always was asking about ROTC programs and West Point married the two with education and and being an athlete, the best out of all the schools that I visited. So I chose West Point and it was the best. It was one of the best decisions of my life. Don't regret it at all. Let's talk crime, Adrian. We're talking to Adrian Perkins. Uh, Shreveport's perceived to have a horrible crime problem. The mayor's office has said things are trending down. We're looking better. You want a new police chief. Tell us why and what you would do. Yeah. Um, I, you know, and it's nothing personal. I just want somebody who can commit to the job full time. Um, you know, right now, our police chief is also a full time pastor. Um, and I want somebody who has expertise to address the bigger problems in Shreveport, the, the, the perception of the biggest problem in Shreveport, which is homicides and robberies. Uh, we need somebody from that background that can get at those things in very innovative ways. Do we have a person like that within the department? Would you search nationwide? What kind of search? Uh, well, first I would go within the department, but um, you know, I'm also open to going nationwide. Because we've um, done that before and it didn't work out too well. Oh, I, and I can imagine. Um, so I'll, I'll, I want to compose a, a commission of um, some leaders in law enforcement within the city to help me make a decision. But we'll review again. We'll go to the men and women in blue here in Shreveport Police Department first. And then we'll broaden it out to be a nationwide search. Okay, you you, you you have your big boy britches on today, correct? Yes, yes. You are going to be Greg Tarver's mayor. You're, Greg Tarver <laughs> is going to run the city. You've heard it's not the first time you've heard no, that. No, not at all. What is it. the connection to you and Senator Tarver? Uh, Senator Tarver has he reached out to me I think in like two thousand and two thousand and twelve or something. But it's just a bunch of city leaders have reached out to me. Um, and I'm very, very, you know, I'm close with a lot of people. He's, he's another one of those people that I'm close with. His family's great. Um, and, you know, as far as influence goes, which I think that's the concern, uh, there is only one entity that influences me completely, and that's the Lord above. You're not, you're not related? You're, are you marrying no. his daughter? No, or were there, no. Was there a... No, 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 no relation, no relation at okay. all. I'm very close to the family. Um, And, you know, the family and me want to make sure this campaign stays about the issues and not focus on that at all. Are there issues? Shreveport is, is in many ways, a racially divided city. Is there a key? Are there issues that you can use to unite Mm -hmm. black and white people? And as a mayoral candidate, what what is what will it take for a city leader to unite Shreveport behind a common vision? That's a lot. Uh, so you, so I've traveled a lot since since I left Shreveport. So my lens is a bit different than you know being from the South. And if you compare Shreveport to the rest of the country, it absolutely is a racially divided city. Um, but the thing that I've noticed, which gives me hope about the future of Shreveport, is that it's a generational divide on how divided Shreveport really is. A lot of younger people in Shreveport, they they go out of their way to be exposed to people of other races. So I think that if you bring a leader in that can facilitate, you know, us actually going to church together, us going to events together, us having dinner together, that's where those barriers will fall apart. The job creation is something that a lot of people have talked about. I've I've preached for a while about Mm -hmm. putting together a team, 
that that's yeah. what they do. They're crackerjack people. They're economic mm -hmm. development specialists. Is that something you would find money for to go do? Absolutely. And our city government needs to be structured to the way the global economic environment is right now. Look to Plano, Texas, which I talked about yesterday in my speech. They have four full-time employees and one part-time employee. How do we compete with them if we only have one person at, at uh, Government Plaza? We can't. Are we mm -hmm. just a bunch? Is, is Shreveport as, as a government, as a city, in our point of view? And Matt and I talk about this all the time because he's 30. <laughs> and he said, he said, you know, he's, he's just, is this a bunch of old folks running stuff? And, and, and you, you, just, you don't know how the world works anymore. Yeah. Now, he may be speaking <laughs> a little harshly, trying to put the old guy in his place. Yeah. But is is he in many ways off the mark or is he on the money i think it goes back to that crime things you can look at numbers to say both things but there is absolutely a perception from younger people that shreveport is an older city uh and that there are no opportunities so for how young do people you get, here. pardon me how do you keep and everybody says this so how do you keep younger people mm -hmm. educated people professional people of both races mm -hmm. from from bailing out well, first and foremost, we have to stop this thing that I encounter every day saying, oh, you're 30, you're too young to do a job. 30 in any other place, you're, you're, if you have the qualifications, you should be able to do the job. So we have to stop the age discrimination stuff and let people know they are welcome in our city. And also economic development. When you create careers, you'll attract those young people too. But as of now, you know, people don't really see those opportunities in Shreveport. What is Adrian Perkins' biggest flaw? Oh, that's a good one. And Probably I, uh, gets up too early. <laughs> no, I, I want to know. I mean, that's a good one. Um, I think the I'm I'm actually not the best politician. Um, you know, I'm I'm new to this, but I think that I'm a great public servant. So for that flaw of me not being the best politician, I think I more than make up for it with my public service and leadership experience. Adrian Perkins, thank you so much for your time. I'm sure you will be back many oh, times of over the Just next. Just invite me back. I would love to. <laughs>